Me and Patsy kicking up dust, chapter two, sitting up with the dead. I walked into Patsy Klein's house on Nella Drive like I always did, without knocking. My husband Duke carried in the food we'd brought and laid it out in the kitchen. Already there was enough to feed an army. Fried chicken, baked ham, deviled eggs, biscuits, pies, cakes, and of course, drinks, cokes, beer, and liquor. You'd have thought it was another one of her and Charlie's famous parties. Things looked the same, but there was something off in that house. I told myself it was because Patsy wasn't there to greet me like usual, hollering, it's about time you got here, little gal. But there was something else. There was no music playing. When Patsy had folks over, there'd always be a radio on, a record spinning, or tapes on the reel-to-reel. -reel. Patsy listened to all kinds of music. She'd open my eyes to blues, rhythm and blues, and swing. I remember when she played me Etta Jane singing at last. I was amazed. I loved it. Now it was too quiet. People was talking, but they was hushed. Patsy liked to talk loud, and whenever she was holding court, the room would be filled with laughter too. That day, the sounds were all wrong in there, seemed like. I started helping right away, carving up a ham, trying to be useful. Guests were arriving already. The house would be packed before long. My brain was foggy and I was in shock. All I could think was, this can't be right. Patsy's too young to die, heck. We were both just 30, born a few months apart, her in Virginia and me in the hills of Kentucky. There was so much living left to do for both of us. Julie and Randy, her two little kids need raising and Patsy's dreams had just started to come true. She was winning all kinds of awards and folks from all over were hearing her music on the radio getting to know how special Patsy Klein was. How could she have gone from this world? When there wasn't no more food left to prepare, I went into the living room where her gold casket was on display in front of the big picture window. The drapes were closed. It was chilly for March. Maybe poor Charlie forgot to turn on the heat, I thought. He had a lot going on. I stood by the casket wishing I could see Patsy one more time, but the lid was closed. The plane crash had been too awful to leave it open. Charlie put Patsy's best publicity picture on top. She smiled in that picture like she didn't have a care in the world. This was nothing like the sitting up ceremonies we had in the hills. Back home, when somebody died, the body'd be laid out, not boxed up. We used to sit up with a body for days, singing and crying. How else could you get used to the idea of a soul going into heaven? Hilda, Patsy's mama, planned to have the funeral back in Virginia and bury her there. That would have ticked Patsy off. She used to say, the next time I set foot in Winchester, everybody in town will know Patsy Klein has been there. Well, at least that'd be true now. I sat down on the pretty white sofa Patsy had made special. In my mind, I couldn't stop fussing over her. Had they done her makeup good? Patsy hated when her scars showed. They better have had the sense to put her in a good dress. Patsy wore the prettiest clothes, real sophisticated. She'd grown out of the cowgirl look she wore all those years ago when she was just getting started. She gave away a bunch of those costumes and ordered fancy dresses and long gowns special. Nobody could call Patsy Klein a hillbilly anymore. She was too elegant. She didn't care what folks expected of her. To heck with what anybody else thinks, she said. She just wanted to feel good. Most everybody else was in the kitchen drinking and eating. I was sad and mad at the same time that nobody was sitting with Patsy in that living room that she'd fixed up so nice and pretty. I decided to stay with her a bit just me and her, like we'd done so many times before. I thought, what am I gonna do now? I don't have nobody to take care of me or fight for me anymore. Right then, I felt a cold chill, goosebumps running up my arms. I shivered and said out loud, Dad gum, it's cold in here. Like I said, there wasn't nobody to hear me, so I don't know why I said it out loud. But then I heard Patsy's voice like she was right next to me. She said, we'll turn on that darn heat. I swear I heard her plain as day. So I got up and did just that. Funny thing was, I was glad. Patsy was still telling me what to do. Since the day we met, she'd been saying I could do something to change things, encouraging me to stand up for myself and for my music. Whatever it was, she always told me what the God honest truth was and she always had my back. She said I could do it and she was right. Patsy hadn't left me. I would keep hearing her voice in the days and weeks after her death. Even now, years later, I still hear her. She came into my life and changed everything. 
And I know I'm in a lot to her too. She'll always be a part of me. That's what real friendships do. We made each other better.